Cyclone Freddy ramping up yet again on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for February 15th. Freddy on its way back through major hurricane equivalent status today and certainly looking better with an eye starting to appear and the remnants of Dingani and Gabrielle extratropical cyclones that are still swirling down in the uh, higher latitudes now of the southern hemisphere. In the Atlantic is 106 days until we start uh, but still no signs of life on the horizon, which I think is good news for all involved. A front moving across the central Atlantic Ocean right now is the main feature, but certainly nothing interesting. In the Southern Hemisphere, we're looking at this right now. A 30% chance in the Gulf of Carpentaria still, uh, although those chances are decreasing. Freddy out there over the South uh, Indian Ocean, uh, getting into the southwest region now under Meteo France's jurisdiction and uh, Cyclone Dingani which is now off as an extratropical low. Freddy of course being the main uh, star of the show and models have trended further west and it does look now as though that Freddy will impact the Masserine Islands and Madagascar next week uh, and could be a long tracked tropical cyclone even more so than what it's already done. It's certainly on an odyssey and a half across the Indian Ocean right now. Main question is how strong will it be when it gets to the other side? But here is a satellite imagery of what's going on around the world today. Look out for those red zones. You can see Freddy's signature there and a little bit of Dingani as well. And over northern Australia, a few red zones there signaling very heavy rainfall from that uh, area of interest, 91p. And here is some satellite imagery. First of all, Freddy here, and you can see it chunnering away and churning and starting to get a little bit more present in terms of its eye structure, certainly improving on satellite imagery and probably about to reach category four status on the Sapphire Simpson scale. That's the second time it will have done that and it could get even stronger as it continues westwards. Will it get to category five? Well, big question mark over that. Certainly a possibility, but looking at it right now, it's still got a way to go. On the infrared imagery, you can see that the eye again is, is starting to get a little bit deeper and those cloud tops still staying fairly strong, very high cloud tops, well into the minus 80 degrees Celsius range uh, depicted by those yellow colors. And one or two little bits of white there as well if you see that denoting minus 90. But generally, the appearance is looking good uh, and gradual improvement is expected. This is Invest 91P in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Look at the amount of cloud tops it's really pushing up into the atmosphere and it's sort of split into two there. Very interesting appearance, uh, but time is starting to run out for that one as it gets closer to the coast and time will run out in about two or three days. Sea surface temperatures across the world look out for 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 26 and a half Celsius, good enough for tropical cyclone development usually. Caribbean Sea, just a little bit below that, offering around 78, 79, 26 Celsius. And you can see over into the Indian Ocean, decent temperatures there, getting up to around 27 Celsius. Southwest Indian Ocean, of course, where we might see a lot of action. Uh, at 28 quite easily in the Mozambique Channel and out at sea pushing that number as well uh, ahead of the current tropical storm uh, we're looking at temperatures looking pretty decent for Freddy there 26 plus North Indian Ocean 27 to 28 degrees Celsius in the lower latitudes off the coast of Australia still a few areas of 29 pu pushing 30 degrees Celsius along the northern coast of Australia Gulf of Carpentaria 29 quite easily the Coral Sea 28 to 29 and towards Fiji and Vanuatu around 27 to 29 and further east there east of Fiji around about 27. <clears throat> Looking towards the western Pacific decent numbers in the lower latitudes still around 27 degrees Celsius all the way up and beyond Guam through the Mariana Islands and towards the Philippines still pushing 26-27. Anomalies, it is above average in the Western Pacific, 
And elsewhere it's looking fairly average with a little bit of a warm pool near Fiji but not as big as it used to be. La Nina effect is still there in the central Pacific, but look east where we have the Nino 3.4 region near the Galapagos Islands. Look at that, getting quite above average there towards the coast of South America, and that could be a harbinger for things to come. Oceanic heat content looking good in the tropical zone there towards Fiji. Still decent conditions there. Anything in the turquoise towards yellows and reds are good conditions. And towards Guam there as well. Still quite a big chunk of orange there, uh, which has uh, settled in in the last few weeks. It didn't look like that, that at the new year. And it's surprising to me that we've already seen that develop. Let's check computer models and look at this surprise which no one's mentioned yet but a curious little system to the north of the Hawaiian Islands that pushes through towards the west and southwest. GFS and all the other major models have this uh, low pressure disturbance. Uh, quite a strong one as well getting towards 60 mile per hour winds there and question marks as to whether that could have a chance of tropical or subtropical development. It'll be fairly short lived, keep an eye on it. Meanwhile, in the Southern Hemisphere, take a look at these two systems. Dingani, post-tropical by now, will continue southwards generally. And there's Freddy uh, continuing westwards generally. And really remarkable how it stays at a low latitude for such a long time. No other storm has really managed to do that. The closest example being Leon Aline in 2000. There it is, continues westwards. Um, not much we can say about the strength of it because the GFS has already underestimated its current strength. Uh, so we could be looking at something much stronger than what it's depicting. Look towards the Gulf of Carpentaria system. You can see how little time it has. Very broad system. Uh, certainly will be a rainmaker regardless of whether it gets that tropical cyclone status briefly or not. Uh, my guess would be no, uh, but certainly some strong winds initially along that southeastern coastline and then as it pushes inland around the 17th, uh, it will then start to move southwest. So lots of rain for the whole area. And now we get to take a closer look at the rainfall amounts. This is out to seven days and most of this will be caused by the current tropical disturbance 91P. So you can see all of the Cape York Peninsula there getting quite a bit of rainfall activity along those coastal regions though is where the maximums are going to occur. We're talking areas up to Cairns and south of Cairns particularly and on the west coast I think that might be south of Waipa. Uh, certainly looking at decent amounts of rainfall, very high actually in some places between Cairns and Townsville, uh, getting up to around 28 inches, which is 700 millimeters over that seven day period. Curiously inland, it doesn't look like we're looking at enormous amounts, but still possibly 13 inches in that area further inland, not far from Croydon. That is around 300 to 350 millimeters of rainfall. Well, let's take a look at the longer range, day five to 10, and this is what becomes of Freddy. There it is, continuing west south westwards, affects Mauritius and Reunion, probably as a category two at least there, and then landfall in Madagascar as a category one. Of course, that could still be higher, considering the storm has overperformed. And there it is in the Mozambique Channel, re-strengthening again, reaching hurricane equivalent status for another occasion there, in the Mozambique Channel and it begins to stall so another storm affecting Madagascar in the mix as well. That's all the serious stuff out of the way you can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items and full season and individual storm animations by request and are still waiting for Hone t-shirt which is not going to go out of fashion until Hone forms when will that be? Good question. In the Silly Range then, we get to see what happens with Freddy. It's the Silly Range because it's so far out. Uh, not to say that this might not happen, uh, but it's just a very long range and it's silly to speculate really. But there it is, stalling again and continuing southeastwards. And would you believe it, still just about a tropical cyclone by the very end of that loop, 16 days from now. How far is that? That's the... I think the 1st of March actually, still active there and just about to turn post-tropical, still as a hurricane equivalent cyclone moving southeastwards. What a track and endeavour that would, have, would end up being. 
Australian region, two weak systems there that you can see on the radar, uh, one not far from Darwin, the other one near Western Australia that starts to move out westwards. Another system might start to form there off the east coast of Australia into that later period, another system for the Gulf of Carpentaria from the remnants of that one near Darwin. So quite a lot of activity around Australia, uh, although this is very long range and I expect that the situation will change markedly between then and now. But you can discuss all of that and everything else on the wide world of weather, and my goodness it is wide, on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for all chat needs, I guess you could say. Uh, plenty of stuff going on in there. Well, what happened on this day? It was February 15th, 2005 when we had double terror Olaf and Nancy in the South Pacific. Nancy peaked early in the day as a category 4 and weakened rather quickly. Olaf peaked late on that day as a strong category 5 storm. Some suggest that it was extremely powerful indeed and there is a visible image of it not far from the Samoan Islands uh, reaching that category 5 peak late on February 15th. Uh, a very impressive storm uh, along with Percy that year I think it was as well. A uh, very fascinating setup it was that season down there. Well then back to today and in the Atlantic when we get the call. The first name is Arlene. In the Eastern Pacific it will be Adrian and in the Central Pacific sometime soon we'll have Hone but we've been waiting since summer 2019. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the Western Pacific, the next name is Sanvu, and in the North Indian Ocean, it is Mocha. We've had eight storms so far around the world, quite a few noteworthy ones as well. Certainly, Freddy will be up there. 92 is the average per year. In the Australian region, our next name now is Herman. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, it's Inali, and in the South Pacific, it's Judy. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.